and welcome to Airability. Um, this week is going to be another can't buy it, build it week. I've been busy in my shed, I've had a few little projects going on and I've been, you know, messing about with my stuff and trying to make life easier as a bench rest shooter. So, I've got some good news. I've finally got some land to shoot on and um, I'll be honest with you, I've probably been waiting 40 years for somewhere as perfect as this. Um, I've been given access to a field um, and on that field there's a small amount of hard standing so there's a little bit of a road on it which is fantastic for me because it means I can park my car across the road sideways and stand all my wind flags and target on the road which means for the first time in my life I can push up and down the road in my wheelchair and adjust the wind flags how I want them instead of doing it by remote control and um, asking my ever suffering wife to do it and that has really helped me learn the best distances for my wind flags rather than just doing what I thought was right so it's it, you know it's all looking good I've been there about five or six times now and um, I'm great greatly enjoying the practice and I must admit I can do about three or four hours before um, before it's time to come home and you can shoot an awful lot of cards in that time anyway I've been building in my shed so the first thing is when you get some land to shoot on in my opinion you have to have kind of like zero impact you know out of pure politeness to the landowner because they you know they get nothing out of letting you use this land it's just out of their their good nature so I like to make sure I take all my lead home with me all my mess home with me and I couldn't find a commercially available A3 target box to accommodate you know the the Benchrest UK targets. I couldn't find one in the UK. There were some in America, but I couldn't find any in UK. So you know what I say: if you can't buy it, build it. So I was having to think about how to make a clean, easily portable um, target box that I could take to the to the um, field with me. So I was looking in my shed, and I found this toolbox that I hadn't used for ages. And you know these type of toolboxes where they have the, they're all divided up by plastic boxes so you can put your screws in and small tools and things like that. Well, I'd lost half the boxes and this must be going on 20 year old and it's just been sat there. So I threw the boxes out and um, I'll show you what I did with it. So the good thing is, first of all, um, at the end of the day, you just close up the lid and all your mess goes home with you and you sort it out at home. And that's fantastic. It, it captures, up to now it's captured 100% of, of, of the pellets. So I'm over the, over the moon with that. Nothing falls out the bottom until you give it a good shake. So what have I done to build this? It's really simple and it's really effective. So as you can see here, I'll deconstruct it and I'll move backwards and, and show you what I did. So here you can see fully accommodate a bench rest UK A3 card. I've got a little bit of foam here that makes sure that the card lines up with, um, you know, cent centrally on the on the, um, you know, in the case, and it lines up with the steel back plate. So here, um, I've got magnets that hold the target on. Now these magnets are great. They look like the little pins you would stick in a drawn pin board, but instead of pins, you've got magnets on. And they're available on UK for pennies, you know, and they're fantastic. I've got about 50 of them here. I could only buy them in a, in a, in a box of 50. So um, I've got a couple spare if I lose a few in the field. So here we go. We've got the target on, held on by magnets. So how we achieved that was, I got some off cuts of foam. This is, you know, that case foam that you, you put in your rifle case and you cut away the black and it reveals the sexy colour behind which complements your stock. This is some off cuts that I've used in uh, Tangerine Dreams case. And obviously when you reveal the black, it's orange underneath and it's really high density. So what I've done is, is I have, first of all, I put a two millimeter steel plate all the way in the back of this box. So there's no air gun pellet getting through this. Then I've, then I've put strips of foam glued to the, um, steel box uh, sorry to the back plate and what that does is it holds this big these big pieces of foam off the back plate 
Now, why is that, do you ask? And I'll tell you why. Because the pellets go through this form, they hit the back plate, they go flat, and then they fall to the bottom here, and I can shake them out of this slit here, which makes it easier to clean up at the end of the day. Um, so they fall down the gap between the um, big sheets of foam at the front and the steel plate. And when you finish shooting, you can see them all collecting in here, and you just close up the lid and take your mess home with you to sort out later, which is fantastic. Now, so as I say, I glued the foam to, to strips to keep it off the back plate. There's a two millimeter steel back plate in there. And I put some little corner brackets on here, which obviously take the magnets and hold the target on, which is absolutely fantastic. I've got some weaker magnets down here. It was just what I had in the shed to make it work. As you know, you can't buy it, build it, relies on what you've got in your shed at the time. But this is a fa fantastic, um, you know, it really has worked for me. You know, it's, as you can see here, it's very easy to use and away you go so how do i use it in the field well i tell you what i've stolen my wife's favorite decorating um step ladders and i use these mini bungees somebody gave me a good tip about these and i must admit i use them for all sorts you know you can use them to hold your wind flags down you can use them to tie this to the ladder um so it's the appropriate height competition height you can, you know, you can use it, you know, to, to, to immobilise teenagers who get on your wick. You can use it for anything. They're absolutely fantastic. And um, it's, it, um, you know, it, it, there's nothing else to say about it, really. It does its job, and I'm really happy with it. One thing I do want to say is I've got this, I found this glue that sticks anything to anything, especially things like foam. To smooth surfaces you know where you've got imperfections it's called goop it takes a bit of time to set but i've I, you know i've you know you can stick metal to metal wood to wood plas plastic to wood rubber to wood it's one of those all-purpose glues it's clear it's a i think it's a rubber based glue i've even you know managed to repair inflatables with it so it's really universal so there you go and it all just gets thrown in the boot of the car on the way home and there's zero impact on the field when i've left so jobs are good now i've been busy as well i've done a few little jobs in the shed as well now the first one is you know my said mini project um where i took the coaxial head of a said mini rest and put on a smaller base so it was lower for me well i had to shorten the handle as well and i put the golf ball back on the handle that came with it you know, the thing you used to move the, the handle and twist it. And I'll be honest with you, the golf ball wasn't for me. So I've been looking for something, um, you know, different to put on. So what I came up with was, was I was looking on eBay and I found these um, rubberized golf club handles. Um, quite stretchy. They got the same um, size hole as the said mini rest um, lever. And so I bought a couple of them and I fitted one to my said mini rest lever and quite a tidy little job. It means it's quite grippy when you need to twist it. Um, you, you don't have to hold it right at the end where the knob is. It's very tactile and obviously it's orange. So here's a few, here's a little video of it in action. And as you can see, um, it's suiting me down to the ground and I'm, and I'm over the moon with it. So there's a, another little job. I've been doing in the shed so there you go how i did it was obviously i've shortened this arm um originally and um, because it was a little too long for me it was actually touching the trigger guard on the rifle and then all i did was i you know filled the inside of this handle up with guess what goop and i just rammed it on there and it's rock solid it took about 12 hours to set and it's you know that's not coming off unless you cut it off fantastic um, you know, I said I've been busy in the shed. Well, it's been a third and final thing I've been doing in the shed. And I tell you what my nemesis is when I'm out in the field and I'm shooting bench rest outside. We all moan about high winds. Yes, but high and predictable winds can be overcome. You know, if the wind is constant or, or the same wind pattern uh, appears regularly, you can learn how to adapt to it. 
But one of my nemesis is when on the wind flags, it looks like there's virtually no wind or a tiny amount of wind. And it's doing that wobbly thing where you don't quite know where it's coming from or where it's going to. Now, the problem with that wind is sometimes it can nudge, you know, it can nudge you out of the 10 ring quite easily and you can get these like, you know, the equivalent of a 9.99, which is extremely frustrating. So I've been working on a wind indicator that would um, allow me to see very low winds and, and, and let me kind of judge where those winds are coming from. Now, as ever, I've been tinkering in the shed and I was working on paddles on bearings and things like that and i found that that they reacted too slowly for these little puffy gusts of wind and things and it wasn't working so i went absolutely low tech and you're gonna laugh here but it works a treat so i've got a coat hanger i've got a coat hanger here and i bent it so this end now will fit in the end of a tube that i stick in the ground and on the other end i have a whack and grip big orange ostrich feather which tilts and blows round and tells me which way all those little tooty gusts of wind are coming from and it's absolutely fantastic as you can see here from the video it just gives you those little visual indications um, of where the wind's going and you can just finally adjust where you're aiming on the target to make sure that it's a 10 and not a 9.9 .9. so this will go up for further testing what i've already learned is i think i need a bit more a bit more string here so it'll allow it to flow a bit more freely but on the whole it's working well and this will go through further versions in the future but i think this idea personally is going to stick and i'm and i'm pretty much enjoying it so you know i've showed you what i've been doing in the shed built a backstop Put a handle on my seb rest um on you know put a new handle on my seb rest and uh i've been working on this low wind indicator very technical nothing nothing new in the world is there it's a feather but anyway until next time always have a safe backstop and take care all right bye bye then